What up world, this is The Goal Net recording live from outside Chicago here. And today we are here to talk about a new 2020 model from Sportmask, but first things first, still in the middle of a pandemic, can't imagine um, probably six months after I first uttered those words in a video, we'd be in this situation. Please do your friends, family, neighbors, fellow hockey players a favor. Please wear your masks and follow the local guidelines around the pandemic. Secondly, if you're American, creeping up on election time, do your duty and vote. But let's dive into the good stuff. So what we have here is a brand new Made in Canada Pro X goalie mask by Sport Mask. So with the new Pro X mask, today's video is gonna be a deep dive where I take you through what this mask is and is not. Unfortunately, probably won't do a full on review with this mask as I haven't really done with masks in the past. Reason being, I fully respect that the first and foremost function of a goalie mask is safety and I don't have the resources or proper testing apparatus to release um, that test data and actually compile it myself. I do hope at some point in time, we will get something out of the NHL. Almost probably two years ago now, they promised to release some helmet safety data. And I think that would be awesome for not only the NHL players, but also us as consumers to get some data where all the helmets were put through the exact same safety standards and get a better idea of maybe who's building a better mask or a weaker mask because at this point in time, it's basically all opinion and all theory, um, just in terms of consumers as what we think is the best and worst mask. Um, so that's why I try and stay out of that. But the content you can expect is today's deep dive, which should be about 15 minutes in length to comply with Instagram uh, rules. And then we will do a follow-up video comparing the Pro X to the Pro 3i. So first and foremost, what is new about this mask? That sounded terrible. The mask on the brick was not a good idea. Just thought it would look cool in the shot. Um, but first and foremost, if you cannot tell what is new with this mask, um, first and foremost is the, kind of the aesthetic design of this mask. So if we look up top, still got the oval holes, uh, the triangular oval holes on the ear the giant flat center bar. Um, so all very distinctly sport mask features, um, as well as the kind of X style backplate harness um, and the plastic chin cup there. So all distinctly sport mask features, but if you'll notice a few seconds ago, I zeroed in on the chin, um, and that is because the chin style is new on the sport mask, um, as well as the fit. Um, and I'll get to that in a second, but I, I really zoned in on the chin just because I think that is the distinctly newest feature um, aesthetically and design wise. And I asked Sport Mask kind of point blank, you know, is this your version of the Bauer 960? Unfortunately, if you follow my account, you know, I do not condone by any means just flat out ripping off um, that mask, you know, not doing the proper safety testing, things like that, that definitely happens in the market. There's so many masks that are just, you know, shameless knockoffs. And Sport Mask was quick to point out, not at all. Um, as I'll get to in a minute, proper testing was done. And I've already mentioned, you can tell looking at the top two thirds of this mask, it is distinctly Sport Mask. But Matt from Sport Mask, um, when I was kind of interviewing him, trying to understand what was new with this mask, was very open and transparent um, that in his generation, you know, every goalie was inspired by the iTech 960, which is what that mask was at the time. And he said, you'd be kind of crazy to think that any of us would be designing or building masks if that mask didn't exist. And so the goal with this was to pay homage to the mask that they feel inspired um, you know, a lot of goalies of today and a lot of people in the mask industry, but then still really encompass what makes a sport mask a sport mask. And I think they did a great job of that. Um, you know, they tried to design something that was in that flavor without it being a shameless copy. So definitely when it comes to the looks of the mask, you know, that's always beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, but I think this mask will definitely appeal to Sport mask traditionalists in the sense, you know, the bar, the ear holes, things like that that are distinct. 
and then maybe pick up a new audience um, for people that may want something a bit different just aesthetically from the mask. So as we talk about um, <clears throat> things that are quintessential sport mask, this center bar is always the first thing that pops out to me. It's big, it's aggressive, um, it's the flat bar style. But what's more important, <clears throat> excuse me, but what's more important with this mask is the story about the vision around it. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, you should be able to find it on my YouTube page here where you're probably watching this video. Sport Mask did a lot of research um, around the optics with the Pro 3i to make sure that it had really outstanding visibility. And that has not changed. In fact, they took it to a whole nother level with this Pro X mask. So how did Sport Mask do their testing um, to try and create what they feel is the mask with the best visibility on the market? Um, and that is photometric testing. So basically what they do is they 3D print a shell of the mask that they've designed, they mock a cage up onto it, and then they use lasers and sensors and light to understand how much light passes through the cage window here. And then based off that data, they iterated. So what iterated means is they actually tweaked the shell design, uh, maybe tweaked the cage, so they made changes. That's what the iteration is. They made changes, built another prototype, then they put it on the system again, got that data, analyzed that data, understand what they would need to change to reach the uh, end desired goal uh, with their DOE, which is design of experiment, and eventually got to the point after iterating each different shell size two to three different times. So we're talking eight to nine different tests to get what they feel is the best vision of any goalie mask on the market. I have worn this helmet uh, probably about three times now and wore the Pro 3i quite a bit. And I can definitely say, and again, very reluctant to do reviews when it comes to masks, but can very comfortably say that Sport Mask, I think has the best sight lines with those two models of any mask that I've tested. And it's pretty crazy. When you are wearing this mask, you don't notice the bars, you don't notice the windows, you do not notice the chin um, like you typically do in other masks and coming from a lot of different masks and shells, I have to say it's almost freaky um, wearing that. I kind of feel like seeing a little bit of the corner of the shell, believe it or not, has been a crutch I didn't know I had. And when your face is sitting in this mask um, and you don't see the pieces of the edge of the window or you don't see the bars, it truly feels like you're not wearing a mask at times. So the visibility is second to none. Um, but I just point that out, not at all in the sense of a negative, but to really highlight how different this mask is. And if you've worn the same mask for a long time or maybe different models from the same mask provider for a long time, you may not realize that your eyes get used to seeing the center bar or where those two bars intersect or a corner of the cage. And changing to something like the sport mask is really going to be eye-opening to you when you realize how much visibility you pick up, whether it's 20%, 10%. Um, I don't necessarily have the data to quantify that but just optically playing, you will be amazed how much more stuff you see um, that you didn't realize was essentially an interference before. So I love the testing um, that Sport Mask does there. Love that it's data-driven as well. They don't just move the cage window up or down and say, hey, better visibility for goalies. They're actually moving the cage window, adjusting the shell design and optimizing everything around visibility with the goal that as the goalie, you are not gonna see any bars. So again, that was something that was started with the um, Pro 3i and was carried over and taken to the next step um, where they tested the sides, which they didn't do the first time here with the Pro X. Um, and another carryover feature you will see from the Pro 3i, an eye on that noted Enegra. This is also an Enegra shell here on the Pro X goalie mask. So with the Inegra itself, um, the fiber uh, material is the same, but they actually tweaked the resins and epoxies that they used um, for combining the different layers of Inegra to make the shell. And they actually increased the strength and durability of the Pro X mask um, in comparison with the Pro 3i, um, which was the other Inegra mask that I tested last year as well. Um, so. 
Pretty interesting. Um, Enegra is a material that comes in a lot of different grades according to Sport Mask. Um, you know, it'd be like saying um, Sport Mask Goalie Mask. Well, there's a lot of different Sport Mask Goalie Mask, different price points, senior, junior. Enegra is kind of the same thing. It is a brand of fiber. Sport Mask, uh, according to them, uses the top of the line fiber and they feel it is absolutely the best material to use for a mask. And in their eyes, the reason that it is not more popular um, within the industry is some of the price points that the other mask companies are trying to obtain in terms of sell-through price, which kind of retains back to their profitability, is that they feel that they think their competition finds Inegra too expensive, and that's why they're not using it. So, you know, whether or not, you know, again, one of those things I don't necessarily have the data to know, but it's very interesting that Sport Mask is going so far out of their way to highlight that they feel they're using the absolute best shell material and that they're sparing no expense in the design of the helmet, um, which the, should then translate to a fantastic on ice product. So one of the other key things too with Sport Mask is that this mask is a Canadian made mask. And that is not just assembled um, in Canada. The elastic is sourced from Canada. Uh, the clips are injection molded in Canada. The steel for the cage is from uh, Canada. The cage itself is made in Canada. So it's very important to Sport Mask um, that they use as much Canadian content as possible. And apologies if I get this wrong, but I think like literally every single component on this mask um, is sourced directly from Canada and not made offshore. Um, so that's huge. And that's actually one of the things too, I mentioned the pandemic earlier talking to Sport Mask is they feel they've been able to maintain business as usual as much as possible during the pandemic um, because not relying on suppliers overseas where different countries are at different stages with the pandemic and the global shipping industry um, is kind of a mess right now that it's allowed them to maintain business as usual as much as possible. Um, so really cool to note that they take Made in Canada so passionately, um, you know, that they're not using any offshore components because you could also, I believe, say Made in Canada with an offshore shell and an offshore cage, but you're doing all the assembly in Canada. So one key differentiator um, that I think it's really important uh, to point out with this sport mask product. If we take a look at side, um, this is the carryover foam. This is the same foam that is used on the Pro 3i. At first blush, this looks like the traditional Rubitex foam, but it is not at all. It just happens to be cream in color. And this is a foam that used to only be available in their NHL masks. And the first time they made it available at retail, was with the Pro 3i and again carries over on the new Pro X here. Uh, and we can do some fact checking in my other video, but from the uh, research I did in preparing the content last year around the Pro 3i, I believe Sport Mask found that this, their, this new foam that they're using is 20% more impact absorbent um, than a traditional Rubitex foam um, that you'd see. So love to know that Sport Mask has the data. And another thing that's key is they got the material data sheet from the foam supplier and understood how that should react. But they actually have their own internal puck, cast, um, puck cannon for testing. So Sport Mask assembled the mask, uh, put it on a head form, and did the testing to verify that they were achieving better results with this foam than a traditional Rubitex and that it aligned up with the foam supplier's data. So running out of time here, so let's kind of recap what this mask is. This is a sport mask. You can clearly tell looking at all of the key features in it, but it has an updated design that is designed to pay homage to the iTech mask that inspired everybody at Sport Mask to get into the industry. We have the high-end Inegra shell. We have the um, updated foam lining that used to be NHL only. And one other thing as well is the fit should be a little bit more streamlined fit than we see um, a more aggressive fit um, than we see with some of the other sport mask products. So if you have any questions, please throw those down in the comment section. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you are not already subscribing, please do so. And you will see a follow-up video here coming in the next few weeks comparing the Pro 3i more deeply to the Pro X. This is the Goldnet signing out. Thanks for tuning in.